today, we're going to start with maybe just one juicy yin pose, and then we're going to flow. So we're going to go for a hip opener, and we're going to do butterfly. You want to have your heels two hands length away from your groin, lift up tall, and then just drape yourself down. Um, allow your head to relax onto your feet, or you let your chin start to come to your chest, or somewhere in between. Take a full inhale, and with your exhale, just sigh it out. <sighs> Tuesday morning. It's nice. Tuesday is Mars Day. Mars rules this day, which has to do with action. It's connected to our gallbladder. And in English, there's the word of like, action with courage, sometimes too much courage maybe. It talks about do you have the gall to do that or the gall to do something. And it comes from this, basically this useful bile that comes from the gallbladder. Where it's strong but it gets the job down, breaks down all those fatty stuff. Take a couple moments just to feel into the areas of your body that need a little lovingly breakdown, <coughs> breakthrough, break up kind of thing. If we imagine our bodies as basically like a microcosm of nature. It is this balance between being built up and broken down. And it's really these, this difference that really can fuel a lot of the system, a lot of how we feel, where our challenges are, where our strengths are. And our physical body the stress stress of textures can be really positive I mean even how you build up a muscle is what gives you bigger muscles is getting it to the edge of what you're able to do and then going a little further and this actually like rips your muscle so it can heal bigger and stronger. And take some time to notice how your energy is this morning. last couple moments of this pose, just check in with how your emotions are this morning. And you are complex, deliciously deep, and not like everyone else. So we, we do often experience emotions at the same time. If 
about different things or And then with your next inhale, roll up. Keep your feet as they are and just come back onto your elbows. See, I'm kind of stretching this one yin pose thing. And let your head drop back. <laughs> if it's uncomfortable for your neck, you can always raise your head up again and rest your chin on your chest. <clears throat> and take a couple moments to notice <coughs> how your thinking is this morning and it might be yeah not very much there yet this morning <laughs> It's all right. I put the timer on to make the egg this morning, prepare, and um, yeah, forgot to put the egg in the water. <laughs> yeah, mm. but I set the timer. <laughs> um, if you know me a little bit, you know that there's certain things that I pay attention to in astrology and a lot that I don't. But I know that things are still a little confused for the next couple of days because Mercury just went direct yesterday. And so we need to really rediscover our feet around communication and transportation and machines. So just practice your patience a couple more days. Now let your upper body come all the way down to the ground Still keeping your feet like that. And bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. And just check in a little bit with your self that is the most unchanging part of yourself. You can think of it as your, you know, your spiritual kernel, the part of you that's not attached to your personality, that is without time, And stretch your legs long. Let your arms relax. We're going to have a mini Shavasana. Palms open to receive. Feel the earth hold you. you can nearly, it nearly feels like it's rising up to support you. And hug your knees up to your chest and start to roll back and forth and see if you can get enough momentum to come up onto your feet without touching the floor and stretch your arms all the way up to the ceiling like a happy gymnast. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> Bring your hands to heart center. Step your feet together. Let's sound om um, three times. It might sound pretty, it might not. Let your elbows be heavy. Close your eyes, empty your breath. 
Take a deep inhale. down and with your inhale stretch your arms up high and with your exhale bow forward let your knees be soft let your head drop inhale halfway lift and then step back to plank and you can either drop your knees chest and chin or come to chataranga so ashtanga namaskar is knees chest and chin or chaturanga halfway down bring your elbows in robin inhale upward facing dog or low cobra exhale downward facing dog and if your elbows bothering you and downward facing dog say experiment by putting your elbows onto the ground <coughs> feel the inhale help you lift away from the earth Feel the exhale help you drop towards the earth. Inhale, you can feel your root lock, your Uddiyana Bandha. Exhale, your chin is kind of comfortably coming towards your chest or looking in between your feet. Empty your breath all the way. Look forward. And with your inhale, you're going to hop forward and come to a halfway lift. So it's one breath, really. Beautiful. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Push down with your feet. Rise up tall. And exhale, samasti, tihi. Notice if your hips are pushing forward and inhale, stretch your arms up high. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, Ashtanga Namaskar or Chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So I find the Ashtanga Namaskar, the chest, chin, and knees to the floor, really builds your strength, I think, faster than just coming straight to the floor. It's a somewhat awkward move to start to incorporate if you're used to not doing it. But if you need something a little bit more gentle, don't be too shy. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, and then float your feet forward as you're inhaling and come all the way to the halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down, let your head drop. Push down with your feet, rise up high, lift up tall. Exhale, samasti, tihi. Then bend your knees, drop your booty, inhale, ukatasana. Exhale, bow forward. We'll play with it more. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, chataranga or the ground. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. That was beautiful. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot to your right thumb. And with your inhale, lift up, warrior one having your heels slightly separated. And then exhale, chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your left foot or your other foot to your other hand and rise up, warrior one. So eventually your heels are lined up, but if you're tight, they're a little further apart. And exhale, chataranga. We'll go over it more in, in just a few moments. Inhale, upward facing doggy. Exhale, downward facing dog. So today we're doing kind of an Ashtanga inspired series. 
And some of the postures happen fast in the beginning, but we revisit them. And the design of these first sun salutations is really to start to get the core <coughs> of you warmed up, to get the fire stoked. <laughs> Take another full inhale. You can put your hands back where they were. Empty your breath all the way. Look forward, and as you inhale, hop forward or jog or walk, ending your inhale in the halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees deeply, drop your butt, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, Utkatasana. Try it with your legs together, it's actually more powerful. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float, exhale, chaturanga or the ground or ashtanga namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog, floating your thighs, beautiful. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot to your right thumb, even if you have to help your right foot forward. Spin your left heel to the ground, rise up, warrior one, one breath. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot to your left thumb. Come all the way up to warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. For the time. Thank you. Absolute. Feel your breath be your fuel. And notice that with your, with your thinking and your feeling, you can actually make that fuel work better. So notice that curiosity, for instance, can be a drive. Like how is this breath gonna feel in this posture? Or how is this posture going to get stronger over the next couple of weeks? Or why is it on some days I can do one thing and on the next day I can't? Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way and float or walk or hop your feet forward, inhaling halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees, drop your butt, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Was that two or three? Two. Inhale, Utkatasana, thank you. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Fly or float, exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar or Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot to your right thumb. One breath takes you all the way up, maybe looking at the ceiling. Exhale, Chaturanga, beautiful. Inhale, upward facing dog. Or low cobra, exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot, step your foot all the way up to your left thumb and allow your inhale to take you all the way up into warrior one. And then exhale, Chaturanga, beautiful. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice to hear the sound of your breath. If you lose connection to your breath, you can always come into child's pose, take a break. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, look forward with your next inhale, float yourself forward, halfway lift, exhale, release and bow down. Push down with your feet, bend your knees, drop your butt, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Now step or hop. 
to about hip distance apart with your feet. Inhale, lift up your chest and with your exhale, roll down and hook onto your toes with your peace fingers and your thumbs. Inhale, halfway lift, so you're lifting up your head and then with your exhale, bow forward, curving your spine, letting your head drop. Your weight rolls towards your toes and you're actually organically pulling with your arms. So your elbows are moving out to the sides like little ears in a sugar bowl. Feel your Uddiyana Bandha, your Mula Bandha. And with your next inhale, lift up your head and then slide your hands underneath your foot completely so your toes are touching your wrists, even if you have to bend your knees a lot. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. And release your hands. Inhale, lift up your head. Exhale here, then inhale all the way up, roll up. And with your exhale, hop your feet together or step them. Ta -ding. Take an inhale here and with your next exhale, step out to your right. <laughs> Reach through your fingertips, take a nice wide step, you got it. Spin your right toes out. Left toe is about 45 degrees, maybe a bigger step, Robin. And then as if someone's holding onto your hips and the other person is pulling your hand in the opposite direction, stretch out, then come into triangle pose. So eventually you may hook your big toe with your peace fingers and your thumb. You wanna feel that you're tucking your right buttocks and this allows you to lean your shoulder blades back. The refinement is to pull in your lower ribs make your fingers look alive. One more inhale, exhale. Then inhale, lift up. Switch your feet. Open up your left foot so it's, yep, totally open, parallel on the long side of your mat. Point your left toes in and then, sorry, right toes in and then reach. No, you had it right. You're totally right. And then reach with your left side and then windmill your hands coming into triangle pose. So when you're hooked onto your toe, it's nearly like you're actually pulling your toe. And you'll notice that that pull brings more activity to your abdominals. <laughs> Yay. You wanna imagine that you're pulling your left ribs forward as you tuck your left buttocks towards your right heel. I know, it's adult twister. Does that feel bad? You can always bend your arm. Okay. Then inhale, lift up, and switch your feet again. And you may even take your left foot a little bit to the left and square your hips a little bit more to the back of the mat. Reach with your left arm and stretch long again, trying to pull your right hip back and bring your right hand onto your, sorry, whoa, left rights today. Whew. Left hand onto your right shin. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward, and then with your exhale, twist. With the inhale, feel that you're strengthening away from the earth. With the exhale, feel the release, the twist. Allow your shoulders to come down your spine. And with your next inhale, inhale up and see if you can windmill all the way over to the other side. You can do dance interpretation here, it's totally okay. And then bring your right hand to your left shin or the outside of your left foot. Get long with your torso <laughs> and then with your exhale, twist. So this series is something that you build on and it becomes more familiar. 
So if it's strange or not familiar yet, patience and repetition. <laughs> Beautiful. With your next inhale, come up. We're about five breaths in each pose. Square to the long side of your mat and then step together, samasti to he. Relax your arms. With your next exhale, you're going to step out again, a big step, maybe even bigger this time to your right, and bend your right knee and come either into side angle or side angle variation. So side angle, you can put your hand down behind your leg. You can go for the bind, or you can have your elbow on your knee. If your name's Robin, I apologize. So see if you can lunge deeper so that your knee's over your ankle. And then pull your shoulders out of your ears. Nice pair. Sweet. Feel your chest pulling back. With your next inhale, lift up. Switch your feet and come to the other side opening up your left foot so it's perpendicular to the short side of your mat. Bend your left knee so that your left knee is over your left ankle. And then come into your version of it. So similar to the triangle alignment, the alignment is such that imagine you're in a hallway that's getting more and more narrow. So you're being pressed from both sides into the center line of your body. Feel the outside edge of your right foot pushing down to the ground and the whole right side of your body ex extending through your fingertips. Take another full inhale, seeing if you can have your hand flat, the bottom hand. And then with your inhale, lift up and switch your toes. Switch your toes, actually your whole feet. Have your right foot pointing straight back lunge so you bring your right knee over your right ankle and then you're going to twist and you're going to try and bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee as much as possible so either reaching your arms so that your left hand comes down to the floor on the outside of your right foot or hands into prayer feel the outside edge of your back foot pushing to the ground Notice if you're getting the constricted yogi expression. Feel your shoulders coming down your back. And allow your next inhale to bring you all the way over to the other side. So you can add a little flair as you go from side to side. Most of us don't need to practice trying to be perfect. We're trying to more fit into the box. The beautiful thing about this practice where you repeat a series again and again is that the yoga itself seems to start to disappear and you actually start to be more in your body on a deeper and deeper level. And then inhale up. Open up to the wide side of your mat and then step back to the top. Samasti Tihi. And now you're going to bring your hands back behind you and you're going to trace your spine with your fingertips. And maybe your, your prayer hands go up. And maybe not. So if you can't come into reverse prayer, hold on to opposite elbows. And you're going to take a slightly smaller step to your right. And you're going to totally wonder why I skipped these poses or mix them up. But we're going to do this one first. Square your hips to the short end of your mat. You might need to take your left foot to the left. And then bow forward, bringing your forehead down to your right shin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale up. 
keeping your hands as they are, spin all the way around to face the front of your mat. Square your hips. You might move your right foot to the right a little bit more. Have them point straight forward. Get long in your waist and hinge forward. Inhale. Exhale. Letting your head drop a little bit. Inhale. Exhale. Your drishti is on your front shin. Inhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and inhale up. Turn to the wide side of your mat, release your hands, step to the front of your mat. Samasti, tihi. Beautiful. Now you're going to take a gigantic step to your right. And this time you're going to spin your toes in. And you're going to lift up your chest. And as if you're painting stripes of rainbows on the ceiling and the wall, you're going to roll down, roll down, hinge down. And then bring your hands in between your feet. Bring your hands about shoulder distance apart and bending your elbows. And maybe lightly bringing the crown of your head onto the ground. C continue to breathe in this rhythmical breath. It should be something that gives you strength. When we first start it in our practice, it's a little awkward. Now inhale, halfway up, bring your hands to your hips. Exhale here, and then inhale all the way up. You can stretch your arms out just to get some blood circulation going and then bring your hands to your hips and you want to be able to actually even squeeze your fingers as you hinge forward and keep your hands as you, at your hips and bring the crown of your head down in between your feet. Ish. With your inhale, come all the way up. Stretch your arms out, keeping your feet like they are. And with your exhale, bring your hands together behind you. Reach your knuckles down to the ground. Lift up your heart. And again, hinge forward, bringing your knuckles down to the earth. Again, with your next inhale, come all the way up. Release your arms, stretch them out. Last one, dive forward. And you're going to hook onto your big toes with your peace fingers and your thumb. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, release, and pull yourself down, elbows bending. Seeing even in this wide leg pose, if you can engage your mula banda. Your Uriana Banda. And then inhale. Bring your hands to your hips. Lift halfway. Exhale here. And then inhale all the way up. And either step or hop your feet to the front of your mat. Get a little wiggle. That's totally A-OK. -okay. Now, you're going to lift up your right knee and either hold on to your knee or hold on to your toes and stretch your legs out as much as you can, staying upright. Keep lifted in your chest. If it's stable and easy for you, you can bring your forehead down to your knee. But again, no rush. 
hold on to your foot with both of your hands or your right hand. And then swing your right leg out to the right as your gaze goes to the left. Eventually, it's just your gaze, but in the beginning, you can use your right arm to balance yourself out. But your gaze is important. And then with your next inhale, come back to center. Exhale, bring your forehead to your knee. And then drop your toes, grab onto your hips, hold your right leg out for five, four, three, two, one, release. Just take a moment and notice the different heat in your hip areas. It's time to bring the heat to the other side. Lift up your left knee. Be mindful that you're not sinking the weight into your right hip. Hook onto your toes. If that's where you're at, if you have a strong straight legs, you can bring your forehead to your knee. But wherever you are, maybe keep your left hand on your hip. That would be your right hand. Try lifting your gaze so you can be in balance, available to the world. And then your leg goes to the left and your gaze goes to the right. Eventually you keep holding onto your right hand, your right hip with your right hand. Eventually. First, maybe see if you can look towards your right. Yeah. And then come back to center. You exhale, bring your forehead down to your knee-ish. And then inhale, stand up, let go of your foot. Keep pointing your left leg forward for five, four, higher, three, two, one. And wiggle. That's not a part of the Ashtanga series, but we can wiggle all we want. Normally, this is when this pose comes. But I mix it up a little, so we're going to do the next pose. You're going to lift up your right foot and hold on. You want to bring your foot in front of your hip and hold on to your foot and see if you can reach back behind you with your right hand and hold <coughs> on to your toes. If that's a no for today, you can hold on to your wrist on your left hand. If you're holding on to your wrist, you can either stay standing or bow forward, bring both hands to the ground. If you're holding on to your toes, bow forward now, dropping your head, bringing your left hand down, feeling the strength in your left leg. Inhale, lift up, and switch your legs. Bring your left foot up, and a lot of times for most of us, there, it's not the same on one side compared to the other side. So lift up your left foot. See if you can reach around and grab onto your toes, and then bow forward if you have your toes. If you don't have your toes, you can either stay standing or bow forward and bring both of your hands down to the ground, keeping your foot up in the crease of your hip. And by design, this, this series isn't something that you're supposed to get the first time. There's room for growth. We're not doing the whole series today. We're just doing the half series, BTW. If you're bowing forward, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale there, then inhale all the way up and release. Now come to the top of your mat. Raise your arms up high. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, chaparanga or ashtanga namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
exhale, downward facing dog. Jump your feet in between your hands and inhale, lift up Utkatasana. Utkatasana is where you're standing. That was really nice though. <laughs> Great jump through. So Utkatasana, toes and heels together. Bring your hands either shoulder distance apart or into prayer and looking upward. So you're really celebrating the curviness of your body. So yes, we've got the one in the back of our knees, not so celebrated, but the lower back curve. And then we have even the curve in our upper back as we look upwards. Straighten your arms out. Feel your feet and legs squeezing together. One more inhale. And then exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, Chaturanga or Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot to your right thumb. Inhale, lift up for warrior one. Five breaths. And you kind of have to decide what works for you. Does it work to have your hands in prayer or does it aggravate your shoulders? And then just have your shoulders hip distance, your arms shoulder distance apart. It's very much similar to hips. One more full inhale and full exhale. Then your next inhale, keeping your arms up, turn to face the back of the room coming into the other side. I said keep your arms up. I'm just kidding. Open up your left foot. Lunge lovingly and deeply into warrior one. To give yourself more freedom, move your right foot more to the right. And let your toes spin a little bit. Yeah, isn't that better? Mm. Should feel better. Now, Iyengar talks about liberating the trapped energy in your elbows. Mm. If it aggravates your elbow too much, mm then you bring your hands in prayer or waste attitude hands. <laughs> Take another full inhale. And with your exhale, open up your arms. Come into warrior two. Let your hips open. Robin, roll the tops of your ears a little bit forward. Take another full inhale. Exhale. Then inhale, make your way to the other side. Open up your right toes to face the front of the room. Left toes come about 45 degrees-ish. Feel that you, both your shoulder blades, your shoulders, and your hips are parallel to the long side of your mat. You want your head right on top of your spine. Yes. <laughs> Take another full inhale, exhale here. And then with your next exhale, windmill your hands either side of your foot, Chaturanga or Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then f with your next inhale, float your legs in between your hands and come onto your butt. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now this doesn't come from freakishly long arms. It comes from more developing the power in, your, in the core of your body. You okay there? Bring your hands back behind you, fingers pointing towards your hips. And we're going to do, a, it's Maha Banda, so it's like the grand lock. And so it is your Pada Banda, Pada or feet, because you Pada around. Hasta, Hasta La Vista, I don't know. Those are your hands. And then you have your root lock, your Uddiyana Banda. And in this pose, you're lifting up your chest and bringing your chin towards your chest for Jalantara Banda. And then 
inhale your arms up and with your exhale bow forward bring your hands to your feet either hooking onto your toes holding onto your ankles going over the tops feel your abdominals coming towards your spine letting your head drop just a little And inhale, release your toes. I mean, lift up your head <laughs> then release your toes. And we're going to go straight into the next pose because it's a counter pose. You're going to bring your hands back behind you again, and you're going to either have your feet on the ground and your legs straight, or if that feels like you're breaking things, then you're going to bend your knees and lift your hips and drop your head. Bend your knees. And you can also not do it with your elbow thing. Um, you want to have your whole foot on the floor, Clara. That's why it's hard. So, yeah, it's really challenging. And then bring your hips back down. Beautiful. Cross your ankles. Lift up your butt. And then just slide your legs through. Chaturanga. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then float your feet through. Come on to your butt one more time. So naturally, the time has really been running. So we're not going to do very much more of the series. We're just going to do um, a little mariachi, mariachi <laughs> parts. And then the finishing sequence, or part of it. So right foot is about one hand's width away from your left thigh. Should be right in front of your hip. Reach in front of your right leg and stretch like you're trying to touch your left toes. And then sweep your right arm low back around you and see if you can hold hands wrapping your left arm around behind you. And if you're not sure which one is the grabber, so eventually you're holding onto your wrist or maybe you're just pulling onto your fingers, the wrapper is the grabber. So the arm that's wrapping is the one that's pulling. Bring your forehead down towards your leg, keeping your left leg active. And then release, cross your ankles, lift up your butt or lift it all up, eventually letting your feet come up too. Nice. <laughs> and then other side. So with your left knee bent, you reach low and then keep your left arm low as you wrap it back behind you and grab onto your right hand from behind. Or you're just grabbing t-shirt if you can't hold hands. Try moving your um, left foot a little bit further away from your hip, so other way. So not so much just that way, but away from your leg. Yeah, perfect. So that makes your foot more in front of your hip. It might make the bind harder, huh? Mm -hmm. Let your head drop. Beautiful. And inhale, lift up your head, unwind, and vinyasa, woo, chataranga, or not. Inhale, up your upward facing dog, <laughs> exhale, downward facing dog, and on, a, on your inhale, float yourself through. Yeah. 
Now, we're going to do one that starts off the same way, but we're going to twist in the opposite direction. So you bring your right foot about a uh, hands width away. I'll be your mirror this time <laughs> away. And then it, you're going to stretch your mm -hmm, left arm up to the sky. Other left arm, I think. And then you're going to twist as much as you can and either take the bind here or just let your elbow push into your knee. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, get twisted. Come back around with your head and then with your exhale, unwind. Cross your ankles, lift up everything. And then switch your legs. Stretch your right arm long. Coming around for the twist. Maybe you wrap it. Maybe you're watching other people wrap and you're going, how is that even possible? Because at first, that's that, what that bind to me looks like. But I've also done it in the past when I did my first Ashtanga training. So I know, I know it will come back. That's all possible. <laughs> Beautiful. With your inhale, let your chin come back around, and with your exhale, release. Vinyasa. And you're, you're going to be saved by the bell. We don't have very long. Float your legs through. And um, today, we because of time, we're going to just come into um, either easy pose or full lotus or half lotus. Knowing that later in the day, if we want to do some more back bends, that would be great. Coming to the end class. And just stretch your arms out comfortably. Take your mudra. Smile if we know how much of the series we just skipped. Feel the vibrancy of your energy in your body as you breathe here. We can't end without the juiciness of the lift. So bring your hands next to your hips and lift it up or just lift up your butt for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 back down and vinyasa down to shavasana <laughs> find your way onto the floor raise your arm if you want a blanket feel free to do more if you need to I'm ready to do a whole nother hour with you guys
connect your breath to the edges of your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. With your inhale, you can stretch your body long on the floor. And then with your exhale, hug your knees in and roll over onto your right hand side, perhaps. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Allow your hands to come to heart center. Empty your breath. Let's close with one final om. Take a deep inhale. prayer hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say Namaste. And Thank you for your hard work and enthusiasm. That was awesome. <laughs>